Senna. Pals, we are here. Oh my god! The final episode, finally, finery, finery, made it to the final episode. Let's do it. In terms of M and A action, we're hearing that Gojo and Waystar could seal their long gestated deal as soon as tomorrow. So Lucas Matson may soon take control of the deceased Logan Roy's empire. I'm a little sad that this is over. <sighs> okay, okay. Carpe the DM, people. Carpe, Carpe the, the DM. DM, peeps. Telly, let's run this uh, board presentation. Does that actually translate? Right. No, I think it's sees the, the, the day. Sees the, the, yeah. Just Stewie, that was his guy. And um, yeah. yeah, I don't think we got him. Uh huh. Tell me some good news. I don't think we have the shareholders, and I don't think we have the board numbers to stop this. I'll get the votes. Overconfident, as always. He's properly the Lulu. Okay, I got fucking me. I got Ewan. I got Paul. I got Dewey. Locked. So, yeah. Okay, great. And, and I still think I can get Stewie. Uh, I think maybe Sonia. Maybe Frank. I don't think he's hearing. No, he's not. Christopher Nolan Light. And is Roman even going to show? Is he going to vote? Don't worry about Roman. But just where does he stand? I don't know. Does that make you feel better? No. I don't know where he is. I don't know where he stands. I fucking got this. Tell you here. Wow. That guy could totally do the biopic of Christopher Nolan. <laughs> he just needs to adopt a weird, a Char Kirkian hybrid English American accent. I feel like I need uh, at least a teeny amount of Kendall's delusion <laughs> just in my life. The overconfidence of I'll make it work. Take a shot of Delulu to start your morning exactly. off. Exactly. I think they lost Stewie. He's wonked. So that means we got <laughs> Kendall in the trunk, all trussed up and ready to fucking bake. Yeah? It's good. Okay. What's on his sweater? Uh, me, Simon, Frank, Sandy, and Sandy locked. Frank? So then we got Diane Lou, Sonia, and then we, we have it. Then if we peel off Dewey, Paul, and Ewan, Ken and Rome <laughs> in the against, that's fucking, and Rome might not even show up from whatever jerk dungeon he's being pity spanked in. <laughs> you want to talk Tom? Or I know you've been thinking about ATN and just, just say out loud, it's no big deal for me. Tom, Tom, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Oh. He's very competent, but if he irks you or it's complicated, it is okay. She's got to use her sex to will him. Tom will honestly suck the biggest dick in the room. That's just my assessment. <laughs> That's just That's my mean assessment. And accurate at the same time. Yes. Hey, I just want you to know if there was any chance of you coming. Well, there's somebody here I think you might want to see. Who? It's one of your brothers, and it's <gasps> not Kendall. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought it was like an illegitimate bird's room. <laughs> Let me have a think, but let's. Yeah, let's try and let's try and make this work, shall we? Great. Oh, mummy. How how does Kendall not get pummeled? We'll see. Okay. Uh, look, that was that was a, a an associate of mine indicating they got a fix on Roman. So why don't I just fucking go and nail Roman as well? It would be so nice. You know, corporate narrative. If we're on separate sides, it looks like Lady Macbeth Part Two, and that's not. It would be. It would just in an. It would be nice in an abundance of caution, just to. Just go. It's Close okay. Nice. Just go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's being overwordy. Yeah. She's anxious. She's yeah. She's coming across as very anxious. Well, she doesn't actually have any. Hey, Shiv. What are you hearing? Uh, Anything. Rome to my mom's. Yeah. She wants it so, so badly. I'm on my way to bag him. I'm looking for unanimity. Okay. He's at your mom's. And have you spoken to Lucas? <laughs> of course. Yes. He looks worn down, <laughs> Greg. Yeah. So on the mats and stuff, uh, I'll do what I can. I'm trying. But uh, with us, I just, I, I wanted to get everything straight. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I just wanted to be really nice. And we should, we should, uh, Czechoslovakia it. So for you, there's, there's not anything left? Oh. Well, how do you mean? Oh. Are you interested in a real relationship? Have a backbone, Tom. Honest to God, I don't know. Well, that's honest, yeah. I just, I, uh. I just don't know. I don't know is not no. Sure. All right. Bye. I love the close-up they did on him, though. I love both of the close-ups. Yeah. They're her, so good. And her hair looks great. <laughs> Come with me, Stu. We can win this. Okay? Maybe he should rap for Stewie. <laughs> should rap for everybody. 
from Greg and okay. Ratfucker Sam. Oh. Okay. Now we're talking. Yeah. Oh, Greg is playing both sides, eh? Or he's secret double agent. Oh, shit. So I hear Romy might be there. Listen, I'm sorry I couldn't make your get together, but I need to speak to Roman very urgently. Is he planning to come back for tomorrow? That's for you to decide, all of you. I, I, he, he's very fragile. Is Shiv there? Is she coming? I don't want to get into a lot of business, all right? I want, I, I'd love for the whole family to be here. But she is queen neutral, queen deep cut. <laughs> I'm coming. She's definitely got a side. She called Shiv. She didn't call Kendall. Mm -hmm. We have him. All right. We have him. Great. New Jess. New Jess. I'm, I'm flying out. New uh, Jess. Back tonight. Early tomorrow. Latest. Small team. New Jess. <laughs> Can't even be asked to learn her name. <laughs> New Jess. That's funny. <laughs> Dude, that's so messed up. Stewie, there you are. Are you with me? Talk to me. Good man. Good man. I knew you wouldn't do me dirty like that. I still don't trust Stewie. You shouldn't either. I'm, I'm just uh, making a pit stop. I feel like the family loses. I found Roman. I mean, I always like, had Roman. What is the, just what is like the trajectory, nail, the nail. possible trajectory? Oh, they could surprise us still, Jabby. Hold on to your knickers. With Lawrence Yee, Vol Walter Lawrence? Okay. Oh. Oh, Walter's coming back into the picture? Romy! No, Kendall, no. Where are you? I don't want to be Roman right now. Easy. What happened to your face? Fragile. Your face. Yeah, just easy. He's fragile? Hey, fuck you, fragile. I'm not fragile. What? <laughs> just back up, yeah? Let's take it. Back up. Did you get your little fucking screwdriver in on him? Did you pry him open? No. Right. No. Rome, that's bullshit. We're in yeah. this. We're no. in this, man. No. The world is pivoting on you. The world is turning Ugh. on a fucking clown here. Okay, you're a fucking clown. Look at man. you. You're fucking, look at you, man. You're a clown living in a fucking dream world. You don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it. So why are you trying to like fucking get into Roman, it? I need have some peace. Roman, you and I have I'm Paul. Fine. I have Dewey, and I, I have. Was it a very violent fight? Which I won, by the way. Yeah. But yes, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Not relevant, but just so you know. Yeah. Great, I need you to man you. up here, Roman. I'm going. Don't Please go don't fucking hide don't and talk. Ugh. Uh, the colors go well. I think it's trippy, dude. Lucas, second, please. Oh my god. The colors go well? Is that a sentence? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That... <laughs> the colors just go Greg, well. you're here for the hang. So, you know, to jump in on the little, you know, little awkward social beats, you gotta be like, like a social putty. Okay, you're letting me swing. Okay, he's gonna fucking fire me. I need ears and eyes out, you know, like on the assistant move. It's too Emma. real. It is too real. To kill me. If he wins, if he gets in, you are fucked. You're fucked. That's a motivator. How do you feel about uh, self pitching me on Tom? Oh, just, you know, the main slide. On me, as in my value to keep me? Sure. Yeah, I can sing for my supper. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, well, no. Um, oh, so, yeah, as a manager, I think you know, I'm, I'm simple. You know, I squeeze the costs and juice the revenue. Follow the boss. I, uh, I have an excess of vigilance, I think, and I have a very, very high tolerance for pain and physical discomfort. Hmm. So this thing is um, with Shiv, uh, and with the votes coming up and all. Can, can we keep this thing? close to our chests until I know my numbers. Oh. Oh, he's playing them against each other? I have this thing with, with, with her, um, which is like, she is, she's smart, but I was in need of a little bit of the political connection, you know, but it turns out it's fucking easy. Mm -hmm. I know everything. Oh, you do. You think you I think do. You, I mean, you do. Shiv was annoying, <laughs> but he needed her. He did. With Shiv, there's also, you know, um, She's somewhat, um, we're a bit clickety clickly. What does that mean? What? Right, like. A little bit. I want to fuck her. On oh! That's straightforward. Sorry to get weird, but like, the right circumstances? I think she'd fuck me too. Uh. I can't deal with the mess of that. You know, so then I was thinking, well, if I can have anyone in the world, <laughs> why don't I get the guy who put the baby inside her instead of the baby lady? Whoa. Right. What is he asking for? 
he's gonna make him CEO. Well, uh, this is I weird. Could do it, Cause I could definitely easily. Oh, because you can pull the strings on him. I need an American. I don't want to scare the horses. ATN being the the profit center. He's more malleable than Shiv. I'm not looking for a partner. You know, I'm looking for a front man. Cause um. That's Tom. Close to the bone. We're gonna get. He right is fucking in there. The perfect man for what he wants. Yeah. So I need a pain sponge. When I'm under the hood doing what I love, you know. <laughs> so would that be a problem? Yeah. No, man. This whole no. time he thought he was getting fired. Logan Mark II. <laughs> Only this time he's fucking sexy. <laughs> he's not getting back with Shiv if he does this, though. We don't know that. She won't forgive him. Although she, I mean, she kind of forgave him I a could, betrayal I could, before, I could easily but this see, is major. Yeah, I get it. But I could easily see her trying to manipulate things through him. Oh, God. Yeah, you're right, actually. You're going to get castrated on me, like decimated, but I think I can keep you, okay? Keep an eye on this man out, okay? Why would Greg get castrated on pay? If um, Tom's job is like keeping the costs low, he can't oh. pay 200,000 for an assistant. No, you're right, you're right. I like listening to them speak Swedish. Oh. After some out of cartons here, they have their own movies, Avidin, so I think we have a little maneuvering system. Oh, Greggy, how are you going to play it? Oh, Greggy. He's a clever little He's bastard. He's a clever little bastard. Those are the most dangerous and valuable players sometimes. I am Greg. I know. <laughs> hey, Ken. Hey, so, okay, so I have something huge. Dude, I'm in the center of the fucking universe with, like, knowledge to... to... Shh, shh. If I give you something incredible, would you give me s something amazing? Yeah, sure. Like what? Yeah. Basically, I get. Can can you guys win, you and Rome? And could I quad it up, like full quad? Take your shot, buddy. Just take your shot. Come on. Okay. Buckle up. Wow. I'm gonna ask you a question. If there's any veracity to it, don't say anything. You understand? Madsen is talking to other people. Mm-hmm. Lucas is interviewing for an alternative U.S. CEO. He's fucking you. Yeah. Bullshit. Call whoever. Lawrence, a bunch of vibe hangs. Have you noticed a little cooling? A little bit? I wouldn't call Madsen so we can figure out how, Already how we're going to... Already calling. Oh. She's... That's wrong. That's the wrong move. Mm -mm. Yeah, you need your facts. Like, do, do... Call Carolina. Call Carolina. They have erased you from the New Deal announcement draft. It's shitty. Shiv, it's, it's shitty. She should be thanking him. Greg. 100%. Why would you give away so your, your source? Oh, yeah. Two faces, Lawrence, and Klein. I don't know who else. I'll, I'll know soon. Tom. Hey. Telly, thanks, man. You got my message? I just saw it. So look, uh, this is uh, non-prejudicial. This is friend-level briefing. Clean of upside, downside. Side effects may include a fat fucking consultation fee. <sighs> I mean, from his point of view, he doesn't need the name. He needs chop, and Shiv doesn't have... Shiv's here. Fuck you, tell us. <laughs> you three as a voting block, and on top you have, say... I have, uh, I have Ewan, I have Paul, I have Dewey, I think, and, and then Stewie, pretty sure. What about leadership? You need to present a coherent plan to the board mm -hmm. in your leadership candidate. Uh... Combination, or like a, a, like a trio, a troika, would that work, or... Um, well... Oh, it's gotta be one. Um... Just say it, tell us. I think it hasn't been great for credibility. The incredible f brother bandwagon. I don't know who the hell calls us the incredible f brother bandwagon. Everyone. <laughs> One strong name for CEO, either combined with a chair or a chair with business job. Mm -hmm. Is what I would say. Off the record. Impossible. They all want the top spot. He, if he just don't doesn't suggest himself, this could work in his favor. I think there's a few ways through this. Anyone would say we have to go into battle with our own version of the future. With a king. Uh, oh, and pray tell. Yeah. Madsen's a fucking prick, mm -hmm. right? He practically killed dad, dragging him over. He's capricious, he's cold, he doesn't understand the business. He's a prick. I would like to kill him. And if we're gonna kill him, 
We need to get real. And we would need... I think it would be me. Oh, um, of course, yes, Kendall, yes. Uh-huh. Dad said that it would be me. We're still doing this? We were getting close again before, and you know this, mostly. And I was texting, and he was warm, and he said when I was with him late one night that it should be... Hmm. Persuasive. Yeah. What, like, Shiv has the same. Well, he offered it to me too, Rome. Oh, yeah? He, he, he fucking promised it to me. He promised it to all three of you. So what are you going to yeah. do? Let's get past this. I genuinely think anyone would say, anyone objectively would say, L.A., my, my profile, experience, uh, position, desire, public pronouncements, it's me. What do you think? Compelling? I think he's right. Shiv, seriously, take ATN, take all of news, save the world. Rome, uh, social media, fuck it all up again. It'll be fun. I'm not actually going in, right? Because, you know. There's no bad sharks in BIM, baby. They're North Atlantic. Well, they can commute. All the seas, in case you didn't know this, are connected. <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. Come on. It must be so cold. I don't they're, know. They're, I think they're in the Caribbean. Okay, fair enough. Who do you think Dad actually wanted to give it to? Uh, no I one. I don't think Dad gave a about anything more than putting one foot in front of the other. That is a fact. Yeah, I don't think he wanted to give it to any of us. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He wanted to live forever. Unless. Unless. Unless we kill him. Okay. What? Kill him. Yeah. I like that. That's intriguing. How it's we hot do they're it. being well, facetious now. Just, I know. And if we kill him, we get to go to bed. I'm tired. It'd be so annoying if it went wrong. The murdering. Like, you just try to murder me? <laughs> <laughs> no, not actually what you're meant to do, and it is not a good thing to do. You guys actually just murdered me. You guys are the worst. How dare you? <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. This conversation is the Ross and Rachel of succession. <laughs> it really is. This back and forth. You get the bauble. Congratulations. It's haunted and cursed and nothing will ever go right, but yeah, enjoy your bobble. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You can smile, bitch. <laughs> no yeah, problem. there we go. There you go. <laughs> Goddamn teeth. Let's see how long this lasts. Yeah. yeah. The show has a tendency to trick us. Yeah, Weird. that's what Happy Candle looks like. This is the first time we're seeing them united again. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you say? This is a fucking waste of time. Virtual dinner with Pop. What? You when know, is this from? I don't know how many weeks ago. Wilkie, Landon, Hoover, Al Smith of the Vatican, David Cox, Hughes, Taft, Brian, Martin Van Buren. Hey, JQA. <laughs> how many elections? <laughs> elections of you lost today. today. <laughs> Clinton the first. But not, but not the, not the worst. worst. What is this game? The loser list or something. All very nice. Very nice. <laughs> but how do you play it? I don't know. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, I am a little teapot. Mr. Logan Roy. Very good. Oh my gosh. Shows. I am a little teapot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Vernon is a moron. Carl Miller is a crowd. <laughs> Did not like it. That was accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this music touching them? I think it's just seeing their dad in a positive state. Yeah, like he's just it's like a behind the scenes moment. Something they rarely saw themselves. Plus, old Scottish songs are emotional. <laughs> hey. 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 Yeah. They need to talk. Good luck. Oh. No. No, no. No. That's all fucked. Madsen was just 
stringing me along or he switched lanes, but... Why is she telling him this? Mm. Either way, it's not going to be me. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Are you sure? I mean, is that... How, what did... Is that even true? Yeah. Greg. Oh. Why? 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 Oh, God. Greg is in so much trouble. Maybe you should vote it through, you know, if it's all set. I don't know. Oh, Tom. Yeah, Chev, you should probably know. It's me. Oh. It's you? Yeah, you might as well know. I mean... Bullshit. You're gonna find... I mean, you're gonna find out. It's gonna be... I think, uh... Yeah. The transparency here is crazy. Jesus, you're a fucking... Like, you went for a... a an empty fucking suit? Tell him how you really feel. Good luck, motherfucker. Because we have the numbers, yeah? Good fucking luck. That went well. Greg's in trouble, though. It's Tom. What? It's fucking Tom. Tom? Yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's Man. run our numbers. Let's go. By the dry cleaner. <laughs> By the dry cleaner. Did you fucking tell? Huh? You bastard? And now they have a chance to fucking pull their fucking opposition together, you fucking prick. No, I, I don't think I... I you I'm fucking, not... you fucking little prick. I was waiting for that. Yeah. Oh! 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 Greg! Oh! All right, wake up, zombies! Time to activate! Come on! Phones! I want to see some fucking phones! Call Frank, call Frank. Make sure he's locked in. You're ringing him. Okay. Where's Emma? Emma! <laughs> I'm She's right like, here. I'm right here. Battle stations. Shots fired. I would have been surprised if Tom didn't hit him. I was waiting for that. Yeah. We have a revised offer to consider from the Gojo board, and a lot of work has been done to get us to a position where we're ready to sign if the board agrees. Uh, we've aired the issues. Uh, yeah, this, this deal, the deal is a bad deal. The Gojo offer. Mm. So I suggest we move to the vote, kill this, excuse me, Gojo bullshit, and, you know, let's eat their lunch. Uh, Ken. What, you want me to read it out for due process? Come on. We have the votes. Would anyone object to moving directly to a vote? No. 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 Uh, very well. Let's see. Oh, they're about to be surprised, aren't they? Yes, I think it's a good deal. I can't in good conscience as chair vote any other way. You know my vote. No. No to Gojo. Yes. And yes, we want out. No. First, do no harm. Nay. Team Ken, baby. I'm a no. Mm. Roman. Come on, Romy. Why is there stalling here? Uh, n nope. That's okay. Oh, Shiv? This is... This is going This is going Shiv? Shiv. Uh oh what, what is happening? Is it even now? She's the, is um... She the tiebreaker? I think she's the tiebreaker. They had this in the bag. Oh, yeah. Six to six, they said. Are you good? Yeah, just... Can I have a moment, please? Just... Fuck off. I just need a moment. Think about what, whether you want us to keep the company or hand it over to Tom and that piece of shit who killed our dad. Uh, I might have changed my mind. What? I'm good for this company. I'm, I'm, I'm good for us. You know, we all vote. We keep control. We don't. Then everything's over forever. This doesn't make, like, logic. Where's the logic? No, I just don't think you'd be good at it. What are from? you doing? Is she trying to make a play? You can't be CEO. You can't, because you killed someone. <gasps> what? Wait, what which, do you mean? Wh which? What, like, what, like you killed so many people you forgot which one? That's, that, that, that's not an issue. How did she find out? She, he told her. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, it was a difficult time for us, and I think I, you know, whatever, must have something from nothing, because I, I just, I wanted for us all to bond at a difficult moment. Wait, it was a move? Uh, or... What is happening right now? Did it happen or did it not happen? It did not happen. It did not happen. Vote for me. Just please, vote for me. Shiv, vote for me. No. 
It doesn't even make any sense. It's not sad. I'm the case. youngest boy. Oh, whoa. <laughs> You're not. And you know, it, this, it mattered to him. He wanted this to go on. Well, I mean, she's the bloodline though. What? I'm the I'm the bloodline. We're all the fucking. No, bloodline. I just mean if you're gonna play that card, Dad's view was yours weren't real. What the fuck did you just say? Well, just not real. Whoa, everyone, everything's coming out. They are a pair of randos. One is a buy-in, the other is half Raba, half some filing cabinet guy, right? <laughs> what the fuck? <gasps> Go of him. Did you say? What are you uh, doing? Uh, Stop. Did you say? You had no kids. Don't don't do this. Okay, shit, don't do oh this. my god, this is. Me. You piece of shit. Get off me. Jesus Christ! Stop! Oh. Shiv, no! Wait! Shiv, wait! Can you just fucking leave her? Fucking child. Wow. Talk about embarrassing. I don't understand what informed her, her move there. You are bullshit. You're fucking bullshit. Man, I'm fucking bullshit. She's bullshit. It's all fucking nothing. What's he gonna do? He's got a... We had a gentleman now and face the loss. <sighs> I don't know. I'm scared that he might choose to do something really not good. I love how nobody intervened while there was physical. <laughs> I wouldn't. The family is just handling business. Just let it be. Ken, I was thinking maybe we that we should maybe just uh, adjourn the meeting and and re uh, re re. Ken, uh, Ken, it's done. We sell it to Gojo. You don't have it. Oh yeah, just leave. He did not handle that very well at all. And if, if anyone had any doubts about his leadership, just that display alone. It's a wrap. Why, Why would you, would get, you in get in a lift with him? Are you mad? Maybe he didn't witness it. <laughs> like, read the room, bro. Oh my god. Oh, she wins through Tom, I guess. Maybe they worked it out. Mm. Who knows? I just, I just wanted to say congrats. Thanks. You picked the wrong side. Plans, planning. Yeah, I want to talk to Jerry. Yeah, Jerry gets it. She's not afraid of the dark. And who else? Frank, dead. Carl, dead. Really? You? You f dead man. Hmm. Matson hates you. Wants to clean up. You are a. F Piece of shit. But I got you. I huh? Got you. He sees himself in him, that's why. Yeah, I guess. It makes sense. Closer together, good smile, wonderful, one, two, three. This is the new team, all right. Jesus and his disciples. <laughs> <laughs> even, even Judas is in the room. There we go. There we go. They'll keep him just a, yeah. a punching bag. Yeah. Ooh. That's it. No longer their company. It's for the best though, they're free. I don't think they see it that way. Hmm, not quite, but... No? All right. I mean... That's symbolic enough. That's something, though. There's a lot there underneath the surface. I'm, like, actually really worried about Kendall. Yeah, that's right. Stay close. Oh. What? Well, it's, the opening is always a shot of the dad from behind. In the classic Shakespearean sense of things, or I guess, you know, old plays, you generally had a comedy or a tragedy. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two, right? Comedy is a, a, a happy ending, co and a tragedy a is a sad ending. Yeah, what is a comedy but a drama with jokes? This is definitely a tragedy, like, and, and that, that was very clearly demonstrated from the beginning of the show. Didn't feel good at the end, but it was thought-provoking. Yeah. And all along the way, it's always kind of tragic how things don't work out in the way that is more ideal 
ideal. You know, the ideal thing is the family comes together. The show just does this the entire time. And it almost doesn't even feel like it's over because the beats that were played in this final episode have been played throughout. Mm -hmm. And it's just like this poetic repeat of the same thing until the death. It's like this hyper toxic relationship shared amongst the family all the way through and through to the end. Her pivoting at the last second, like I knew something had to come yeah. to get in the way because that moment of them being happy could not last. Yeah. It's just like the show doesn't set you up that way. Just like, you know, in terms of the rhythm of things, you knew something else had to come to blow it all to pieces. And her pivoting at the last second, it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense because she's got Tom and she knew she could get Tom. She wins because she's queen at the end of the day. Yeah, but like queen of what? Queen, queen of the empire. Queen of a puppet king whose main purpose there is to be an empty vessel and be a puppet for Lucas to use. I don't think Tom is actually an empty vessel though. I think that- Right, but that's in theory, that's what he in wanted. In theory, that's what he yeah. wanted, but you could see Tom being king. Like the way he just walked in, his sense of like observing everything, deciding who would stay and who would go. Sure. Tom is not a pushover. Yeah, I, Tom I is a grown up Greg. Yeah, and I think that in a very subtle way, they illustrated to us over the course of this season, Tom has gotten stronger and he's willing to not take shit and he's willing to push back and he's willing to fight and he's willing to get in the mud. His keeping Greg was not actually surprising to me. I could see that coming. Posturing for a moment going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cough, cough. Just get yeah, it. you're still in. You know? Yeah, you're still you know, in. You're still in. It's like, too much fun. <laughs> maybe it is what you said, where he sees himself in Greg. Yeah. When you've betrayed someone like that, and they still keep you on, I would suppose maybe there is more of a sense of, you know, now you really have to be loyal because I kept your job. Tom holds all the cards. Greg has to be his bitch for the rest of his life, probably. Of all the characters in the show, Tom is the one that is the least offensive of everybody. He's the one that I hated the least. <laughs> and he's the one that if, if I had to pick someone to root for, it would have been him. I'm actually glad in the end that he won. Because even though he's not the central character, he is the one that I would have championed. He got the most shit of everybody. He stood by Shiv. He was the most a, a traditionally good person of everyone in the show, even though he's awful too. Yeah, no, I wonder, okay, I don't really play chess very well, but is there a move where you can do something if the pawn reaches the end of the table, uh, of the, oh, the, board, of the board, yeah. then it can turn it into... Turns to, it turns into a queen, I believe. Right. Yeah. So it's almost like Tom's rise, where he started out, he's just like a pawn. He's a nothing. He's not a rich guy from a rich family. He literally makes it all the way to the end. He gets promoted mm -hmm. to like a more powerful player. And he won in the end, you know, with, with regards to Shiv. That was another long running battle through the show. There was this constant back and forth of who was gonna pin, you know? Yeah. Sim Simba or Nala. Yeah. <laughs> she chose wisely. With Ken on top, Ken is really, they're all, they're all self serving. The thing about Tom that makes him different is while he is self serving, he is also so in love with Shiv. And he does care about her, and whatever she would ask for, he would fight to take care of her. I don't know. Sure. It, it's it's left open ended, and there's left it's left for interpretation. And I feel like you could do a spin off show with, with the crew they've got left there. There's so much drama to milk if they wanted to. Yeah. But probably best to leave it where yeah, it's at. Yeah, just leave it where it's at. There is this inclination to continue mining for drama in shows long after they should have ended. May as well just end on a high note how you intended. Leave it at that it's a great story that they have made here and like a, a very intense journey that they've taken the audience on over these four seasons the sweet picking tom was highly unexpected for me that's the one surprise in the entire show in this entire season that that caught me off guard. He was constantly humming and hawing, like scared that he was yeah. gonna get fired. Yeah. And I didn't see coming that at that dinner table, cause all I could think in that moment, I think I was so fixated, I was projecting. I was, I was fixated on, I hate the position Tom is in right now. I hate that feeling of like, the other side of this table is someone so much more powerful. And right. you, you have to like find a way to kiss their ass. It's a disgusting, uncomfortable feeling. And I was so hyper-focused on that. I didn't see coming that the Swede was gonna pick him as CEO. Yeah, you know? I mean, I definitely saw it coming that he wasn't gonna keep Shiv, especially in her behavior where she, I think she felt it too, where she's kind of like, 
I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I like, I just want this so badly. This is my understanding of, of Lucas's character, right? Like he is kind of capricious and all of that. Like you can't really predict what he's going to do. He'll just change his mind on a whim. I don't know. Maybe he was kind of put off by her aggressiveness. Yeah. Her desperation. I had a sense that she was going to get screwed. Maybe also because she's constantly being screwed throughout the show. Like men keep promising her things or people keep promising her things and saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to make you the CEO. I'm going to make you the CEO. She gets really excited. And then they take it away from her at the last second because I mean, and maybe rightfully so because she doesn't have the chops to back it up, even though she is an extremely intelligent woman. And she really did help Lucas navigate the waters towards getting that deal but as this show shows it's like you can't trust anyone literally everyone is a shark and they will eat you at the first available opportunity shiv is one of those characters who actually does help immensely to a given situation she she helps launch things forward yeah and gets no credit for it repeatedly throughout the show there are themes that are established and they just keep coming back and that's both a cool thing in the show and a negative I would feel because like in in some ways the show lacks surprise because it keeps doing the thing you feel like it's supposed to do how many times were you genuinely surprised throughout this season it's all been captured on video it's all been captured I think I was just more surprised or maybe not surprised but like shocked at the level of cruelty and vehemence that the family were leveling at each other. It's not surprising because that's how they relate to each other. They always go for the jugular. Yeah. But I think it just shocks me every time when they go there because it's like, oh my God, you went there. But maybe that that is just so realistic because sometimes when you're in an argument with your family, you know all of the insecurities and the deepest, darkest secrets. When it's time to win, then you play those cards. You play the card on Kendall about like how his kids are not like his bloodline. And that's like a sensitive topic for him. And it just unhinges him, you know, like the things that they say to each other. I'm like, oh, that's so cruel. Yeah. But maybe very realistic. Yeah. That's well, the scene, the, the scene in that um, adjacent room felt real yeah. AF. Uh-huh. I mean, and that's the, uh, that's one of the big positives about the show is just like, Oftentimes the dialogue, even if you don't know what they're talking about, it feels very real. I've had fights with my little sister that were akin to that. So yeah, yeah, it feels real. The way that Kendall completely fell apart in that room and turned into the most complete and total desperate individual. He looked so much like a little boy, just like, please mommy, buy me this toy. That's what I kept seeing in his face. And that's the thing that he does best with this character is he just has this sort of hung dog look to him yeah you know and i mean you bringing up the the whole like kid wanting the toy it ties back into the thing where he's like no but dad told me that i would have it when i was seven years old yeah and it's like okay kind of a messed up thing maybe to say to a seven-year-old and put that pressure on them or maybe it was just you know his dad thought oh that's a nice thing that you say like Mm -hmm. you're going to inherit this kingdom someday son but yeah it gives him a sense of entitlement that he's had yeah and maybe he's just never really had to work as hard as anyone else to really be qualified although you know saying that he he has put in the time and and everything and so maybe out of the three he is the most qualified but you gotta go with the best person maybe but what do i know like i don't run a business like that he's only qualified in the in the sense of optics That's right it. uh he's not genuinely qualified but uh, it was, that's it, why you have a team. It, it was interesting to see where he came from mentally and spiritually with the fact that, you know, he was partly responsible for someone's death. The way it was weaponized against him, it's like, that's exactly like, why did you divulge that? That's so crazy to me that you shared that information. I know it was like weighing on you. Yeah. Uh, but but that, that's the sort of shit where you're like, we're a family, right? Like, I'm supposed to be able to be vulnerable with you. Like, you're not supposed to take the things that I tell you in confidence in a moment when I am falling apart. You're not supposed to take those things and weaponize them against me. You can use anything else anything else in the plethora of shit yeah that i you know that, that we've shared throughout the years but like that stuff those were hard-hitting things i would really like 
love the deleted scene or whatever, or just a little bit more insight into what led up to Shiv having that moment of post nut clarity, whatever it is, like she just had some kind of clarity that was that was not shown up to that point. And so it kind of felt out of left field a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, when, 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 when did that happen? Exactly. It, yeah. it happened so quickly. It's like, was a phone call made yeah. or did she just come to that realization herself and be like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to play second, third fiddle to my brothers anymore. You know? Well, I guess it wouldn't be an HBO show without leaving you in a space where you've got questions. Yeah, you I know. mean, that's good, though, because, like, you can kind of fill in the blanks a little bit based on what you know about the characters, how they've made decisions before. She's so. She lost. They all, all the kids lost. It was a very interesting, candid conversation between uh, uh, the Swede and Tom, where he's like, you know, he wants Shiv. She cannot do anything she did before to Tom. She, no, she, she, he's got the power he's now. He's got the power. Like, if she steps out of line, all right, well, here's the divorce papers, you know, good luck. She wants to stay in proximity of power. And so the only way to do that is to be good, is to, be good to Tom. So he's the yeah. only, he's the one that won in the end. That's like, that's yeah. really crazy to think about because he was begging for like the, 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 the shit pieces, the leftovers yeah, at the, the very beginning. The humiliation that yeah. that man has had to go through at the expense of this family yeah. and like how he's always been been made to feel like he's a bit of an outsider and less than and less than yeah. yeah like it's kind of awful and even the way Shiv was talking about him with Lucas where she's just like well yeah these are his strong points but also these are his negatives so like whatever either way I don't care let him work or uh, fire him like I really don't give a shit yeah you know it she wasn't supportive of him in the room when he's not in the room and that's always been the case with her you know what's funny is like we started this conversation out with uh, the notion that this is a tragedy and i'm realizing that it's actually not as much of a tragedy as i had initially thought at the beginning of this conversation this is actually more of a hollywood ending because tom won the and underdog the, wins the underdog wins the bad guys lost we were just following the bad guys <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's the story all along it's yeah. like but then also maybe it is a kind of a tragedy because when you get in that position you will become a bad guy, you know? Yeah. Sooner or later, I yeah. mean, already Tom's well on his way. Yeah. He's done some bad shit. So, like, yeah, no one is actually good, like you've no. always said. Yeah, no one's good in the show, but Tom is the least offensive. He's the, like, he, if I, like, again, if I had to pick someone to root for to, like, actually come out on top, it would be him because none of the kids deserve it. They're all spoiled brats. They are all spoiled brats. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's not surprising that they didn't get it. I mean, at this point, we followed them for so long that, yeah, you know, I feel like I can sympathize and feel disappointment with them, but also look at it from a different angle and just be like, yeah, <laughs> you were entitled brats. You didn't really deserve it anyway. So I would have rooted for um, for Kendall if in that closet scene with Frank, Frank, if in that scene in the closet uh, at Tom and Shiv's place, you know, the dialogue was different, I would have rooted for him. The thing is, he he, he exemplified his selfishness once more. Right. You know, he's like, it's me, it's me. You know, them, it's me. Like, uh, once again, he was speaking that rhetoric. It's like, dude. <laughs> and so if he had said something different to, in, in, in confidence, like, I need to lead this, but I still want to take care of my family, something along the lines of that. Yeah. I would have rooted for him, you know, in the end, but like this whole thing of him being CEO, oh, you got this, you got this. It's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, it still feels like you're self-serving, you know? Yeah, but I think that's the thing. It's like this family has never been a unit. They've always been ready to tear each other apart and they're all very selfish and just thinking about what's best for them, you so, know? So, so here's my question to you and to the audience. If it had worked out where Shiv had voted in his favor and it, you know, everything was cool and peachy and Shiv got a thing and, and Roman got a thing and they were all working in cohesion with one another all winning, as it were, yeah. would that have been a satisfying ending? Probably not. I don't think that that's the show that we had leading up to it. Do you know what I mean? Do you think they have an alternate ending? An alternate <laughs> ending they Maybe. shot? Maybe. They must have like Maybe. 20 endings that they shot. And then they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll go with this one. This one makes the most sense. Yeah. You know? 
I, I feel like there had had to have been alternate endings that they prepared. You get to the end of the road and you're like, you're experiencing, uh, what's his name, Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled. Yeah. It's like, okay, you feel this a, a sense of indecisiveness. It's like, how do you conclude this story that has been so strong? I would imagine that the writers were like pulling their hair out, kind of going like, well, how do we end it? Because they played the card in episode three that we thought they would have saved until like much later in the season, which is Logan's death. A lot of people would probably say this. That's probably like the best episode that was incredible what they did to just be like so this guy that we've been building up who's like this kind of scary character the scary king character he just dies early on in the season now where do we take it they're like okay you know there's going to be a lot of like back and forth up and down changing of teams and whatnot until at the end it's like they don't win mm -hmm. they lose it all their dad dies and they lose the kingdom yeah. screw you oh, goodbye yeah. well that was quite the journey it was. There, uh, were, there were some really great moments in the episodes as well. Like, I liked all of the stuff with the siblings when they came to visit their mom mm -hmm. and just kind of their interactions. It was really fun to watch. Like It's all fleeting. Yeah. It's all fleeting. Because eventually... The, the happiness is fleeting in this. It is. The, the happiness is we just an illusion. We didn't realize we weren't watching the protagonist most of the time. <laughs> So, you guys, thanks so much for hanging with us. I'm Javi Kawai. This is Achara Cook. Peace out.